All right. So, uh, this gun is hot. But, about some things here. So, I'm not sure. Well, I, I know I didn't. So, so again, the gun is hot. But I do want to kind of highlight this, this uh, weapon mount of light. So, I'm zooming in here and, not, and I'm not sure if the camera is going to pick it up. But there's a serial number there. Uh, I will maybe splice in a picture of the light prior to me losing it so that I can kind of show that that's the same light so uh so i lost my light um maybe on the 19th of october uh it was the first time me of me taking it to the range uh first time it with me taking any type of weapon mounted light to a range uh with the intention of shooting the light you know i mean this this is my carry gun so I am carrying the light. Um, so that same range visit, uh, I lost a light and it just, it, it came off of the weapon. Uh, but because I fixate on the target when I shoot, I didn't notice it falling off. So I didn't notice until a week and a half later when I unholstered the gun and, uh, you know, at home, I was going to look at the light because I was planning on kind of uh, messing with the strobing features. Um, I hadn't turned it on. Uh, so, so I had never enabled the strobing feature because when, when out of the box, they're disabled. Uh, the instructions tell you how to enable it. And then I, I think that's important for, to mention. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that in a few minutes, but, um, when I found out that I lost a light, I immediately started thinking, you know, trying to backtrack, mentally backtrack and trying to figure out how did I lose it. Uh, the only other time I had taken it out of the holster in the past two weeks was at the range. So I knew that it fell off then. Uh, the only thing was I didn't know, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't observe it falling. You know, uh, I did check the area that I normally check before I leave. I look on the ground to make sure I'm not losing anything. I look in the booth on the shelves. You know, there's there's two shelves. Um, I didn't see anything. So almost certainly, and, and I can confirm this, uh, it fell past the booth into the firing, uh, past the firing line. Uh, and I can substanti substantiate that because I went to Reddit and uh, I went to my, uh, so, so I live in Northern Virginia. I went to VA, I think it's VA Guns, uh, that subreddit. And I posted there because I know that other people in that subreddit actually go to the range that I go to. Uh, so I posted saying, well, I was on, you know, I visited this date. Um, I only now just realized that my weapon mount of light fell off. I said it was a Streamlight TLR-7X. It was black. Um, I was at, I think I was on range, uh, lane 13 of the range. Uh, and I said I was there from seven to eight. So a couple of guys kind of chimed in saying, yeah, they have a lost and find out, you know, found, I would go, you know, I would call there and I would, I would ask about, you know, if they have the light or not. Uh, and then a guy, like two people posted with similar, you know, such responses. And then another guy posted saying, he was like, I was, I was there after you left. He was like, I, he didn't say if he, which lane he was in. So he must've been either in the same lane I was, I was in, or one of the immediate adjacent, adjacent lanes, like, you know, uh, what 12 or 14 or 13. Uh, or 14. I said I was in lane 13, right? So um, he said that he saw it. He saw it on the ground. 
Uh, he immediately contacted a range officer and asked that they pull it off of the out of the firing line. Uh, uh, you know, and so I'm assuming, and I've seen this done before because I've actually accidentally dropped a magazine across the line. And uh, usually I just pull the booth out, uh, the table out, and I use a, uh, a brass sweeper to bring it back. And I'm assuming that's what he did. And so he actually got the name of the range officer. His name is Andy. Uh, so he told me the guy's name. He's like, I, I asked that they pull it off the line. He's like, when, when, you, when you go back or when you call, tell him that Andy has it. And so uh, I commenced to, to contacting them via their contact us page. I let them know that I'm a member. You know, uh, 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 most of their clients are not members. Uh, you can you can use the range of being a member, but I wanted to kind of do that to kind of let them know that okay, well, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a subscriber to your to your to your services. Not just someone just kind of walking off the street. I, I've been subscribing for several years now. Um, I'm giving you I'm giving you a monthly, you know, I'm, I'm paying you a monthly fee. Uh, I wanted to kind of set the tone there uh, because I I didn't know if I would get the brush off, and so uh, I I let them know everything that I just told you, what time, what date and time I was there, uh, what lane I was in. Uh, what light that I lost, uh, and asked if they had had it or if they even had lost and found. So the next day I got a reply back with a guy kind of wondering, you know, it was, oh, it, it seemed like it was a brush off or an, a brush off attempt because he was like, he's like, I, I looked in the footage, I couldn't see anything. So I'm like, if you're looking at my gun, you're not going to see it because I think it fell off within the first few shots. And so if I spend a half an hour shooting it, no, of course you're not going to, you're not going to see it. Uh, not if you're looking at the gun, you need to be looking at the ground. If the camera can even do that. Uh, so I told them again, I told them I was a member. I told them the date and time I was there. Um, I told them what lane I was in. I told them, I had a, you know, what was lost was a black Streamlight TLR-7. I also told them what I was wearing, uh, dark blue jeans, uh, tennis shoes, uh, a hat, um, uh, like a dark blue hat uh, with a bill on it, a ball, ball cap. Um, and I couldn't remember what type of shirt I was wearing. So I, so I, I, I told him, I was like, I was wearing a t-shirt. I just don't know what it was. I told him I was a, you know, I was, I was a black man, five, seven, 180 pounds. Um, so I, I was extremely, um, kind of descriptive. And then at the end, I said also another, you know, uh, uh, you know, someone else, saw the light uh someone that i've been communicating with said that they were there that or you know right after i left uh and said that they saw the light on the ground uh with the brass and that they had a range officer pick it up and i told them i was like he said that he's you know that the range officer was andy and that andy had it when i said that their demeanor totally changed so i didn't hear anything for a couple of days and then i got a voicemail. So I, you know, that I, I, I'm usually pretty busy with work and I heard the phone ring, but I kind of, I couldn't answer it. So I checked a little bit later and there was a voicemail. It was one of the manager range officers. So he said that they found, they, they, they have my light. Uh, he also said that he talked with Andy and Andy is a college student, and so Andy accidentally took it home with him. Uh, which is, which is, I mean, shit happens, right? Uh, so they have these little pouches that they stick stuff in, 
you know, when they're working. And he said he put it in the pouch and accidentally took it home with him. Uh, so I was like, cool. He was like, uh, Andy will, you know, this was a Wednesday. So he said, Andy won't be working until Friday at 3 p.m. Uh, come after that time and, and, and we'll give you your light. So uh, on Wednesday, I took my wife and my son with me and we made a kind of an outing out of it. Um, we went and picked up the light and then we went and get, get dinner. So some things were, when I got home, some things were immediately apparent. Uh, I thought that I ha had someone else's uh, light because the light wouldn't fit on the gun. It wouldn't fit on the, uh, on the Picatinny rail. Um, uh, as well, the strobing function was on. So I'm like, what the hell? I was like, I never, I never enabled strobing. So why is, why is it on? So, so those two things kind of, I was like, what the hell? I was like, why, why, why is this light different? And so I, I immediately thought, well, I, I probably got someone else's light because when, when I went to pick up the light, they did, they did ask me to clarify the make and model and the color that I, that I, uh, that, that was mine because they said we have, we have a few lights, uh, that fell off of people's uh, guns. So, um, so I told them that and then they brought it back and I just assumed that it was mine, but now, you know, I'm thinking, okay, well, it's, it's not mine, which it wasn't a huge deal because the, the light came with like six or seven other keys. And, uh, and so I, I looked through and I found the key that would fit. Uh, there was only one that would fit by the way. So I got kind of lucky there. Um, so you know, I guess I was thinking, I was like, well, if this is not mine, should I return it back to them and, and go through this hassle of trying to wait, you know, wade through their, their stack of lights that they have to see which one is mine, right? So today I'm looking at older footage because I was going to, you know, I was going to publish to YouTube and I found some, some footage like a day or two before I went out to the range that time and so uh i was looking at it and i was like hmm i was like this shows a serial number so i looked at the serial number came upstairs grabbed the gun went back down and compared the two serial numbers it's the same light so this is my light so my thought was is that that's my light that's no one else's what the hell is up with the key being different and, and the strobe light turned on and I started getting kind of pissed off because, and I'm making assumptions here. I don't know Andy, but I do believe I might've attended a, uh, uh, concealed handgun, uh, course, uh, at that particular range. So I, I, I know who he is. I've seen him before. Even after that class, I knew that he works there and I knew he looked familiar. It was because he was in my class. Uh, but, um, and, I, and I, I don't assume, I don't usually assume a, a immediate badness when things like that are happening. But my wife did say when I told her what happened, she was like, she was like, you're, you're lucky that, uh, you know, that one of those range officers could have, could have taken it. And I was like, no, nah, that wouldn't happen. And then, uh, you know, after, after all of this played out and I'm, I'm kind of realizing now, I'm like, well, people are, people are human, right? Uh, people kind of take things, uh, that aren't theirs and use them. And, and, and so, you know, again, this is an, an assumption, but my assumptions are pretty strong at this point because of everything I just told you, uh, and how this played out, um, if that was, if the, you know, this is my light, uh, the serial numbers match from before I lost it. And, and, you know, it, it's, it's, it's my light. If that's the case, someone changed the key on the gun and they changed the configuration of the gun, which means that they had it and they were using it. Um, 
So a key doesn't just change when you drop it. Uh, the, the enabling the strobe light is not, is not something that should, you know, it doesn't happen when you, when you drop the gun. It doesn't even happen. So, so if you're familiar with, uh, with Streamlight TLR sevens, and this is probably across their product line, when you enable, when you enable the strobing and, and, and I, so, so again, they come to you out of the box with strobing disabled. So that means someone had to turn it on. And when I say someone had to turn it on, that's what I mean. Because if, if, if you know the product, you know that in order to enable it, you have to hit the button quickly, success, you know, in succession 10 times. So there is no, there is no mistaking turning it on, you know, turning off strobing and turning on strobing. You have to you have to deliberately do it. So uh, uh, the fact that someone might have done that, they can do that to something they just found and, and it still put it into lost and found. Uh, but would they do the same thing to a, to a key? <laughs> and when I thought that, I was like, yeah, someone was using my light. That key is a whole different matter. Uh, to change the key means that you need it to fit on your particular gun and he must have had some keys or found some keys or, or something and was using my light. So I'm not going to say which range I frequent. I might have said that in in some of my other, other videos, uh, but most of my viewers... I'm pretty sure I don't have a lot of followers. So uh, I would find it very laughable and, and I guess coincidental if someone actually remembered what range I go to here if I did mention it in one of the videos that I, you know, because my, my videos are long. Uh, I'm not going to lie. They're, they're long. Uh, and I throw out a lot of de details and data. So if someone remembers which range I go to and which location I'm at, I would be very surprised. So with that being said, you do have his first name and you do know that I'm a little bit upset about the whole thing uh, because I am a, I'm a giving person. And the first thing I did when I thought that I lost a light was that I lost it. I didn't. Not, it never crossed my mind that someone would deliberately take, deliberately take the light. And in order to do that, you would have to be an employee there. Unless, you know, I, I have reached across and got my own equipment. That, that wouldn't stop someone that's not an employee from doing that either. But uh, this guy did say that Andy had it. And the manager confirmed that Andy had it. Uh, but... I think that the manager actually knew what was going on or suspected that much because he mentioned three or four times in his voicemail that Andy was a college student. Uh, I don't know if that was him trying to tell me, OK, don't make a big deal. Please don't make a big deal out of this because, you know, the, the guy works part time and he made a mistake. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that 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 in thinking about this whole thing it kind of set me off and um like i will i'll still use the facility but i will be less trusting going forward in, in, in that particular facility they made things right i got my light back and everything but the fact that this this would even happen it kind of rubs me wrong you know everything that i buy it's it's hard earned you know uh, the money that I make to buy stuff. I'm older now. Um, I didn't grow up poor, but I I was next to poor. Uh, so I know what I know what money means. You know, it, it, I just I don't throw it that shit away uh, haphazardly. And so something is you know I mean that's not the most expensive light out there. You know that there, there you know there are some that cost double the price of what that, you know, dislike cost here, but that that's not the point. 
the point is, is that that shit was mine. And I, I didn't like, I wasn't negligent in, in losing it. it. It, it came off, you know? So, um, if you're an employer where, you know, and you work somewhere where there's a lot of people and, and people kind of, they, they lose shit, don't take their shit home, you know, keep it there. You know, it's not like I was waiting like six months to a year before I was reaching out to them. It was a week, week and a half. Uh, that, that this shit was, you know, it probably still had my damn scent on it, <laughs> you know? So it's like, that's kind of, that's kind of tacky. Uh, and, and, and for, you know, and, and again, I don't know if the manager suspected not that, that that's what happened. Um, but the way his voice and the way he was conveying things led me to believe he suspected that I was going to be pissed off and it, it just seemed kind of hokey the way he was saying things. And so he kind of just laid it on thick. And he's just a poor college student. He, you know, he works part time. He doesn't, you know, he works very minimal hours. He, he made a slip up. He took it home. He'll bring it back on Friday, you know, and then I see that I get it back and it, it's, it's not even fitting on my gun. And I didn't make any changes to the gun or the light and someone else did, you know, so, so yeah, I, I, I was, I was kind of pissed. So some caveats here. Uh, or not the caveats, but some things to kind of remember or or plan for when you have a light is is that you want to make sure that that light doesn't come off uh, with TLR stream lights, uh, TLR especially TLR sevens. I don't know about the other ones. Uh, the light comes with two uh, eclipses. Uh, you have to use those eclips in order to have retention of you know of the screws. The the eclips keep the screws from backing out. Uh, I'm not sure what happened with my eclip. Uh, I I'd assume that it came with an eclip, but I don't know. Maybe maybe I needed to put it on. Uh, but you know I didn't I didn't change the key. Uh, when I when I first got the light, um, it the, the the gun with the key that I mean the, with the key that was on the light, it fit the gun immediately, so I didn't have to muck around with any of that stuff. But uh, the only thing I don't know is if they come out of the box with the uh, with an eclip already installed, and if not, that meant that this is partly my fault that it came off because there was no there was no eclip installed on the gun. Um, so there's that. And, and the reason I say that is because of the fact that when I went to pick up the, the light, all, you know, that, 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 I didn't see their bin their you know, their lost and found bin, but the way the range officer kind of conveyed, it, it made me, you know, made me think, okay, well, this happens a lot. Uh, uh, she said that they, they had a few lights. Uh, so, so this happens a lot. And plus I've seen people kind of talking about the eclip, eclip and leaving it off because it's a big hassle for them. Uh, if that's the case, be ready to lose your light. Uh, so, so, so point one is to always use the eclip. Uh, point two is, is like, if you lose your light and you have a holster that accommodates that light, you're not going to be able to use that holster reliably without the light. Uh, so, so in my case, I was in a rush to leave the range and I just kind of shoved the gun in the holster, not even knowing that it would, you know, that light wasn't on the gun. Uh, and the gun fit fine because I carried the gun in my waistband from, from, from the range to home. And I didn't notice anything amiss. I didn't notice the gun shifting or anything. Uh, so this particular holster also has nothing in in this area here where the trigger is to where something could grab it, you know, in the holster. Um, so so there's no pro protrusion into that area. Uh, so 
there was never any risk of 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 the trigger being snagged on something uh, as well um, this is a 1911 or 2011 so there's several other safeties there's the grip safety and the thumb safety and so I, I, I was good to go uh, but when I got home and well, once I found out that uh, that the light was gone I had to change holsters that irked the hell out of me because I am kind of set in how I kind of carry uh, I quickly grew used to this holster this is a new holster um, and I went back to using a tinnacore curtain which you know is it doesn't accept a light uh, but my light was lost, right? And I needed something to keep continue carrying. So I used that in the interim. Uh, so for those of you who kind of don't, you know, you, you sell your equipment that you're not using or, you know, that's something that you should think about. Uh, how are you going to carry if you lose your light? Uh, you, you know, this holster took two weeks, you know, it's a custom order. It took two weeks to receive. And even with Tenacore, they don't kind of just, you know, it's not like you get that shit the next day after you order. It takes a while. Uh, so, you, you know, you need to be thinking about that sort of thing, those sort of, you know, of those sorts of things. Because uh, getting caught out and not being able to carry because you can't use your holster because your light is gone, uh, that, that's, that was a problem for me. Luckily, I still had to curtain. I uh, don't usually throw away things, so um, or sell things. Usually, I, I keep them, uh, and that was a good idea. On, on you know, I guess in in it, you know it played out well. Have a backup light that you can use so that you can continue to use the you know your light bearing holster. Um, and really that's, that's, that's really about it. You know, uh, you don't see problems like this until they happen. Um, I'm never so uptight that I, 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 I don't think I would have thought of any of that, uh, until it happened. So I'm not so you know, I'm uptight, but I'm not so uptight that I'm always kind of thinking about, well, what if I lose my light well what what would i do so you get to learn from how i had to kind of go through this whole thing without experiencing the whole thing yourself uh so uh again i would say either get a backup light the same light that you normally carry and just keep it around for when you need it in case you lose your your light or if it gets damaged or something right uh or keep a spare holster. I, I love holsters and this holster is really nice. So if I was to if I was to kind of use one of those two suggestions, I would probably get another holster that is non-light bearing that I could use if I lose my light. Or I could I could do both, you know. So I could get another holster like this, a different color that's light bearing and get another TLR 7X. And, and I will be double covered, right? So we're at the 29 minute mark. We are done. Um, again, for those of you guys who have subscribed, thank you for, for subscribing. My account is steadily growing, uh, slowly but surely. Um, if you haven't subscribed, I have looked I'm taking a look at the YouTube, uh, my, my, my account statistics, and I see that I have a lot of return visitors who are not, uh, subscribed, uh, please subscribe. Um, I mean, it does, does nothing, you know, you, I mean, it's not, it's not a monetary thing for you, right? And I'm not making money off of the channel, but I would like to grow my, uh, you know, my subscriber count. Uh, so, so if you haven't subscribed, please do, uh, Click a thumbs thumbs up, uh, and I will continue to share my uh, my activities and share my experiences so that you maybe won't experience some of the bad things that I have. Uh, 
you know, use my experience to get a leg up. All right. Bye-bye.